Hey guys and welcome back to a new video on a brand new playlist here on my channel which is all about Spring Boot 4 Basics with Kotlin. So in this new playlist over the next few weeks and months you will get very modular videos that also make sense when watched chronologically all about the brand new Spring Boot 4 that will bring you from someone who has absolutely no idea about Spring Boot with Kotlin development to someone who is able to build basic REST APIs. And in case you're new to this channel and possibly also new to Kotlin, then definitely hit subscribe here because I am personally developing with Kotlin for seven years already and my entire channel, more than a thousand videos, is all about Kotlin development. Not just Spring Boot, but also Android, Kotlin multi-platform, desktop, iOS, everything we can do with Kotlin, I'm also doing. And what would such a programming playlist on YouTube be without a Hello World video as the very first one? So on this first video, what we will build is a simple Hello World Spring Boot app. So we're able to actually access our backend we built here and it will respond with Hello World, but one step at a time. Maybe you're completely new here to backend and what that actually is, what a backend framework like Spring Boot is, and maybe also what Kotlin even is and why we should use Kotlin for Spring Boot and why maybe not Java, if you've heard about that before. So first of all, what actually is a backend? Put simply, that is in the end, the software that is running on a remote server that processes requests from some kind of client. So a client could be your browser, a client could be a mobile app, a client could be a desktop app. So the moment we access a website like Google here in our browser, what our browser will do is it will make a request here to google.com, it will kind of resolve its IP, make a request to that IP, and then Google has some kind of server that processes this request. And after processing, it will therefore respond in this case with some kind of HTML, which is just raw text, but our browser is able to display that nicely visualized. And this processing of your request, which happens on Google's server, that is the backend's responsibility. So Google has some kind of software running on the server. It receives your request. It handles that. It sees maybe, okay, this is the login user. There are certain parameters for that request we need to consider here. For example, if we search for something like hello, you can see our URL actually changes a little bit. We have a search query in here that is equal to hello. And that of course dictates what kind of search results we get from Google. Or as another example, if you open your YouTube app, then it's actually YouTube server that decides about, okay, user X is actually logged in here. Let's take a look at which videos we should now suggest user X in their feed. The backend is also what manages all that persistent data, for example, behind your account, behind uploaded videos in YouTube, and then just responds with what is needed by a certain client when it's needed. So what is now Spring Boot? Spring Boot is a so-called backend framework. Specifically, it's the most popular and most mature JVM-based backend framework. Too. So JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine, and there are just some JVM-based languages, most prominently here, Java and Kotlin which are in the end compatible with running code on this Java virtual machine. And now Spring Boot consists of two terms, Spring and Boot. First of all, let's take a look at Spring. Spring is in the end just a set of very popular and mature libraries. So if you're new to the development world, a library is nothing else than kind of an extension for your code that someone else has written that helps you to achieve a certain piece of functionality much easier because someone else has already written the, the foundation of that. And Spring Boot is now the backend framework that is based on this popular set of libraries. So Spring Boot specifically provides common functionality that we may want to have from a backend. For example, uh, about security, for example, to easily handle such incoming requests and automatically make sure that we can respond with that in an as easy way as possible in our code without having to deal with all that low level logic. And together with Spring, so the set of libraries, the set of extensions, that makes Spring Boot a super, super powerful backend framework that's also used a lot in the industry for enterprise or for really, really large business applications. Because on the one hand, it allows us to achieve a lot with very little code, but on the other hand, it's still super dynamic and easy to adjust to our needs. And last question before we actually dive into real coding and build our Hello World app, why should we build Spring Boot backends with Kotlin rather than Java? So maybe you know Java. Java is the most popular JVM-based language that is also where the JVM comes from. It's even in the name Java Virtual Machine. And while Java is definitely more widespread for Spring Boot at this point, the trend is actually rather going towards Kotlin. And while it will definitely stay as it is right now that the majority of Spring Boot backends will be using Java, especially also because big enterprise applications can't just migrate from one language to another. But the trend is going towards Kotlin simply because Kotlin is a more modern language or more 
an easier to use language in, in the programming world. We call this syntactical sugar. So I'm personally developing with Kotlin for seven years, as I said, and I've never heard a Java developer who has really, really used Kotlin who said Java is the better language. It's just nicer to use. It's, it's very hard to explain this. It's really something you have to try. You have to try using Java once and then using Kotlin and compare these two. But other than that, another advantage of Kotlin is that it simply supports multi-platform. So there is a technology called Kotlin multi-platform, which in the end means you can use Kotlin to develop applications for the full stack. So not just backends, but you can use Kotlin to develop native Android apps. You can also use Kotlin to develop iOS apps with Kotlin multi-platform. You can develop web applications nowadays even, so via WebAssembly. You can develop desktop apps. So the entire software stack can be developed with Kotlin. And lastly, Kotlin and Java are fully interoperable. So we can have one Spring Boot project where some of our files are written in Java language and some other files are written in Kotlin. So even if you say you have maybe an existing Spring Boot project, you could slowly start the migration and you wouldn't have to do it all at once because you could just slowly add some more Kotlin files while the backend would still stay fully functional. But let's get into actual coding to see how Spring Boot actually works in practice. And first of all, we need to install the IDE, the integrated development environment that we use here to develop Spring Boot projects. So that's in the end really just a program in which we type our code that comes with all the assistance, with all the tooling that we need to make our development experience as comfortable as possible. And for that, we use IntelliJ. Also, IntelliJ is the most popular IDE for JVM-based development. So you can see here also Java and Kotlin. So simply go to jetbrains.com slash idea slash download. If you don't have IntelliJ installed yet, uh, select your operating system. You don't need the, uh, the ultimate edition. That is a paid one, um, which is still great if you want to actually uh, do this professionally. But for learning, you can just scroll down, install this community edition completely free. Will completely be enough for uh, following through this playlist here and also to develop real Spring Boot applications. So simply download that here, install this on your machine. And then and the next thing you need to go to is this Spring Initializer. So start Spring IO. That is the website I need you to visit. Because while the Ultimate Edition of IntelliJ has a built-in project wizard, so a wizard that leads you through creating a Spring Boot project specifically, because in Spring Boot, it's, yeah, there are just some more things that we need to think of when it comes to uh, typing our code. It's not just like a, an HTML website where we have one single file, we type it in and we can inspect it in our browser. But a Spring Boot project consists of many different parts that have to work together. And because we don't always want to create this root project structure from scratch, which would, would, which would be a lot of work, there is this website that helps us create that. Or if you're using the ultimate edition of IntelliJ, you can do this within IntelliJ directly. But if not, you need to visit this website here and we need to make some settings. Specifically, we want to tick Gradle Kotlin. So Gradle is the so-called build system uh, that we choose here for Spring Boot. So yeah, diving into that is maybe a little bit too much at this point, but you can really think of Gradle as the unit that packages all your different files and code together to something that can be executed. So in, in the JVM world, that would be a jar file, so an executable Java file. That is the main responsibility of Gradle. Another option you would have for Spring Boot is Maven. So that's just a different build system, which is also uh, quite popular. But since we are already developing with Kotlin here, we also want to use Gradle Kotlin so we can define this build specific logic in Kotlin as well. But that's really something you don't need to care about at this point. Just take Gradle Kotlin as a language. You, of course, also want to pick Kotlin. So that's the real language that we choose to build our backend. And for the version of Spring Boot, well, this playlist, as I mentioned, is about the brand new Spring Boot 4. At this point, I have to say, you can see it's only, only the snapshot version is available. So that is kind of a, a pre-version that uh, lets you become familiar with the features. It can be, if we are unlucky, that some little things may change a little bit in this version, but the core of Spring Boot is always the same, that, that won't change. And, and therefore, it's also unlikely that uh, something that I'm doing in this playlist will change. But what I'm saying is, the moment there is a Spring Boot version 4.0.0 without the snapshot, make sure to pick that one because that would be the stable version. But that's simply not released yet at the point of uh, recording this video, but will be released uh, yeah, soon, probably in the next few months. Then for the project metadata uh, here for the group, this is typically some kind of identifier for your backend where you also want to have your company name or your personal name if you're a, a solo developer. So here in this case, I will put peer coding. But this is just something that will then later reflect in the project. The name and the artifact, here we want to pick the name of our Spring Boot backend, so something like Spring Boot Basics 
Kotlin. Same thing for the artifact. And if you want, you can pick a description that really doesn't matter here for development. Packaging should be jar. So that is in the end the, the file type that we get here when really wanting to run our app and the Java version that should be used for development. Let's pick 21 here and we will be good. Then on the right side, you can see dependencies and dependencies are in the end just uh, the libraries that I talked about. So libraries, extensions of Spring Boot. And if we already know here during project creation, which specific extra functionality we may need in our backend, we can already directly bake these into our Spring Boot project. So we wanna click on dependencies or add dependencies. And here you find all kinds of uh, Spring dependencies and libraries, extensions that we could really just take here to add to our Spring Boot setup. I don't want to dive into these different dependencies here in detail. We will dynamically extend our Spring Boot backend here in this playlist when we just need more. That's of course possible. For now, we really just want to add this Spring Web dependency. So this in the end just allows us to um, provide HTTP endpoints, so URLs uh, that we can use to, to make requests to and process these that is necessary to make our Hello World app. So just tick Spring Web, then it should be here and then you simply click Generate. What will then happen is Google Chrome or your browser will download a zip file. That zip file you simply extract, which will give you a folder, and that is the folder you have to open in IntelliJ. So I already did that here, Spring Boot Kotlin Basics, but if you've opened IntelliJ, you simply would need to go to File, Open, and then in the uh, File Browser, you would select the extracted folder from your zip file. But after that, it should look something like this here in IntelliJ. So this is our product hierarchy. Also that means pretty much all of our files that are somehow belonging to our Spring Boot project. And now you also see why it's better to use such a project generator here for us rather than uh, creating all that on our own. But in the end, if we go to our Kotlin folder here, so source, that is the folder for our source code, main Kotlin, and then we see our so-called package name. So that comes from what we've entered in the project generator. And then we have the Spring Boot Kotlin Basics application case here. And that's the entry point of our application. So here we find this main function, which is the first function that is called when we launch our program. And we could also already do this by hitting on this play symbol, run Spring Boot Kotlin main. Then it will be built. That is uh, the responsibility of Gradle. So a jar file will be created. And then here in our console, this is in the end the console output of our Spring Boot program. You can see our process automatically finished with exit code zero. Uh, the reason for that is that right now in our code, there is simply nothing that would keep our application alive. So the app simply thinks, okay, there's nothing to do for me. I'll just exit. But that is what we can change right now. In order to change that, in order to now implement our simple endpoint, so in the end, just a way to access our backend, to make a request to our backend and get the hello world response from our backend, Let's create a new file or class here in our root package. So you can either right click new Kotlin class or file, or I created a shortcut for that. And we want to call this hello world controller. A controller in the world of Spring Boot is actually just the a unit that handles requests. And that's really something I will get much more into in the next video, how these controllers work. Uh, but for now, since we already want to handle one single request, we need to create one. And in order to tell Spring Boot that this is a controller and it should handle some requests, we need to annotate this with REST controller. So REST is simply the uh, REST controller. It seems like we're actually missing the, the right dependency. Let's take a look here in build.gradle.kts. That is the place where we can manage which libraries we are using, for example. So this is just some default Spring Boot uh, config, build config here. And yes, the issue is actually that we are missing a dependency, uh, which I thought was added here from the initial project generator. Maybe it was, and I created this project before. But in the end, if you take a look here in this dependencies block, you in the end just link these kinds of strings, and then Gradle will fetch the, re the related uh, classes, extensions from this library from the web. And I want to duplicate this here and also add the Spring Boot Starter web dependency. Maybe you already have this line here. Uh, I, I just don't remember if I tick this box when I create this project. But if you don't have it, just make sure it's here. And then this little button here will appear where we want to click on sync Gradle changes. And then this uh, extension here will be pulled. So we can also access the classes and the extensions that this uh, Spring Boot Starter web dependency brings us, uh, which in the end, at least partly, is this REST controller here. It's still importing something. And after that, we should be able to 
really have this annotation here. We resolve and construct our um, Spring Boot backend that this is a REST controller. You can see there is a red under uh, there is a white underline, which means we can hit Alt and Enter to import this annotation in this case. And now we've told this to be our REST controller. Inside such a REST controller, as I mentioned, this is just a container for multiple related requests we want to handle. In this case, we just have one. We can just create a normal function, hello world, and we set this equal to hello world. And if we then say we annotate this function with get mapping, just like that, and we launch this, and I will say something more about that in a moment, but if we launch this, then, oh, okay, in my case, you see web server failed to start. Port 8080 was already new, so this can happen. Um, that obviously, your Spring Boot backend needs to run on some kind of port, which is then later used to actually let an incoming request know to which specific program on a machine it should be going or redirected. And apparently, I already have another backend or another tool, another program running on exactly that port. So I've now simply stopped that. I actually had another Spring Boot backend running without noticing it. But it's nice for demonstration because this can also happen to you. And 8080 is in the end the default po uh, port for Spring Boot applications. You can also change this, of course. Um, but now you can see nothing is failing anymore here. It was initialized with port 8080 via HTTP. And that means our Spring Boot backend should now be reachable if we try to access it from our browser. Let's try that. Let's go to our browser, open a new tab, and type HTTP localhost. So localhost is just uh, resolves to the local IP uh, that we are running this on. Of course, this backend is not yet reachable online, but it would be if you try to access it offline here, just on your local machine. We explicitly also need to specify the port here with a colon in between. And if we now hit enter, we get hello world. Because what happened here is we're accessing a URL. And by default, if you access a URL in your browser, your browser is making a so-called get request. That's also something I get more into in the next video. It pretty much just says, hey, I want to get data at this specific URL. And then your server will actually take a look. Okay, do I have some kind of REST controller that satisfies a, a request at that specific URL? Because we did not specify any other uh, fancy URL patterns here or so. The Hello World will really just resolve to the default URL. So just our a base URL kind of. So localhost colon 8080. So our server just noticed, okay, there is a REST controller that should handle requests. There is a get mapping, so get requests that the browser would make in this case are also satisfied. So this is the function that Spring Boot just automatically calls for us just by adding these annotations. This maybe seems a little bit magical right now that we did not create this class here, that we did not call this function around, but more about that in later videos in this playlist, how this actually works and why this just magically works out of the box. If this gave you a first great overview of building Spring Boot applications with Kotlin, then definitely stay tuned, subscribe to this channel here because then you won't miss these other videos of this Spring Boot for Kotlin Basics playlist, which I will release one to two videos a week for. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.